human resources employees. What are your best HR nightmare stories? I had one employee submit a form to increase her own salary. She also forged her manager's signature. Like. For real? You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Came into work early for a morning shift, work in an industrial lab. Heard noises from the back corner of the office portion of the building but can't make out what they are because of distortion. Head that way to see what was going on as I was the only one there, so I thought, at 3am. See my lab manager ducking the district manager, her boss, while the HR rep for the district is sitting there, enjoying the view. I noped and went to the lab and tried to forget what happened. To be fair. Relationships between direct reporters needs to be brought to HR's attention. I just didn't realize a demonstration was also required. <laughs> Saw a guy blatantly lie in his recruitment form, watching him fill it out in front of me. It was total bollocks apparently he was 15 thin line to the throne. Went to Eton. Studied at Oxford and served in the army for 9 years after training at Sandhurst not bad for a 21 year old. Who had in fact spent 3 years in a young offenders institute. Battling a drug problem. TBF if he hadn't written 9 years he'd have an average track record for a royal that age. My friend was doing hiring for a staffing agency during college. A guy who we went to high school came in looking for a job. He told the candidate that he had 2 jobs. One paid 10 an hour and the other paid 11. The only thing was that the 11 an hour job requires a drug test. And if you fail the drug test you can't get either. He said that he wanted the 11 an hour job now we knew him well enough to know that he liked smoking. So my friend reiterated the drug test fail rule. Dude said he was good on Friday to take the test Monday. Come Monday he took the drug test. Pissed hot for weed up. Coke. Amphetamines and some other sheet that gets out of your system in 48 hours. Obviously. He tried to score the highest on the drug test. My job is a constant HR nightmare. Boss has slept with co-worker A. Co-worker A is married to co-worker B. Co-worker B plus A have been married, unhappily. For 10 years or something now. B has no idea. Even though B invites boss over for dinner once every other week. Boss is now dating new co-worker, my best friend lol. And has already gifted her $2000. Despite another co-worker suffering from cancer and barely being able to pay the bills when he was still working. My other boss. Who owns other lesser half of company has called me a narcissist in a meeting. Told me literally there are no such things as business ethics. That's barely the past couple months. Been there for 4 years. Sorry. Not HR. We don't have one. Edit. Got tons more stories if interested. But heading off to work now actually. So. Why do you keep working there? Not in HR but my previous senior manager was renowned for sleeping with colleagues. He was married with kids. Before I started there I remember seeing a huge banner plastered across a footbridge that everyone leaving work by car had to drive under to get to the motorway. The sign said. Joe blogs, not actual name, cheating bastard. Turns out he was cheating on his wife with a team leader from another debt. And was cheating on his mistress with another team leader from yet another department. Both the team leaders found out about each other and had a massive fight in the reception of the building. By the time I started at the company both of the team leaders were no longer working there. I work in recruitment so not exactly HR. A guy had applied for a job that required a DBS check, police check. He filled the DBS and all his other checks flew through. The DBS came back as he had committed a crime in the past. Now on our end only the guy who will be applicant's manager and a senior in our department can see the DBS result. He called the department unhappy the job had been withdrawn. He then sent a long email in begging for another chance. He said when he was 17 he beat two women up then threatened the cops with a gun. We're in the UK so guns are pretty rare especially in the 1970s he went into detail about the attempted great this dude wanted a job in a hospital. It's an no mate. I only wanted to grape. I was sitting in the HR office with one of the members of HR. I was waiting on her to finish a form so that we could go eat lunch. 
Suddenly, this guy comes in. He was a young temp employee and had only been there a week or so. And says he has something he needs to talk about. I start to get up to leave when he blurts out that he doesn't like that fact that there are so many gays and leses working in the company. Once he says that I sit right back down. The HR employee asks him to clarify and he goes on about how his trainer was gay and his team lead is gay and his manager is a less, all true, and he doesn't feel comfortable working around all these gays and leses. The HR employee asks him is anyone has ever sexually harassed him. Which he says they haven't. She then says so you want me to fire these employees. Strictly based on their sexual orientation. Just so you don't feel uncomfortable he says yes. After which she tells him to leave the office. She then calls in his manager and talks with her about it. He ends up quitting by the end of the week. My friend who worked in HR told me about her old job where the boss had drilled a hole from his office through to the ladies changing rooms and was perv whacking it every chance he could get. They found out because someone saw the light through the hole as he took the cover off for a peek. He denied everything and they had to take a DNA sample from the carpet under the hole which confirmed it was a, him and B, that he had indeed been whacking away. I just find it insane that someone would come onto the floor of their own office and leave it there to soak into the carpet. Didn't that place reek? I am on the HR team that supports a wide variety of us cities for our company. Including our colorful Florida locations. This is the best story I heard. We had some woman trying to avoid doing work by sitting out in her car in the parking lot. While she was hiding out there. She needed to use the restroom. Well, instead of going back inside, or doing literally anything else, she decides to pee out her car window. Even though I am also a woman. I was impressed and disgusted by the physics behind this feat. She had stuck her bare ass outside the window and just went for it. Unbeknownst to her, her male co-worker had arrived at work late due to an appointment. He drove past to find a parking spot as this was happening. And got full view. He then reported the incident to us. One of our HR people had to investigate this. And sure enough. Parking lot cameras could corroborate his story. Our HR person confronted the woman. Her response, well how did he know it was me? It could have been anyone. We thought. Okay fair enough. The cameras aren't CSI grade zoom. So we only saw the as part. It was harder to completely identify the face. So we went back to the male peer and asked how he knew it was her. His response? Oh it was definitely her. The face tattoos are pretty recognizable. We definitely don't get paid enough for this. The idea that someone working on an hour team has the username thought source pleases me. There was a dude in our other facility that was going around and wiping their ass and shoving the sheet back up into the toilet paper dispenser so that when the next person goes to reach. The workers had races with those motorized forklifts. One did not know that there was freshly poured concrete. Got the forklift stuck in it. According to the union contracts. Such damages are paid for by the company unless it was intentionally done. Walked into my boss's office. Told him about the situation. Hectometers okay shadow v. Can you please return to your office for a while? Okay. As soon as I was at my desk. I heard the loudest god the damn to she's from his office. Then my phone rang. And he told me to inform the insurance. Which ended up paying less than 10k of the damage. Otherwise. The usual HR nightmare is just people not keeping their documents in order. 1. I had a bookkeeper that paid himself to checks every week. We did not catch it for a year. 2. Another bookkeeper quit and files for unemployment. He then claimed a claim with Yok that he had a disability and we failed to make accommodations for him. The disability was alcoholism. And the accommodations were leaving early to attend AA meetings. Seriously. We had to hire a lawyer to fight that. 3. A guy I hired hurt himself on the first hour of the first day of work. He claimed he fell and hit his head on the wall. He was out for weeks on workman's comp form the concussion. Then when he came back on light duty, he could only do desk work but managed to fall again in the bathroom and hit his head again. It took me 9 months to get rid of him. 
It turns out this was not his first rodeo. When I called his former employer the lady I spoke to made an offhand comment about workplace accidents and head injuries and the importance of cameras in the workplace. For, while doing a remodel of a museum. One of my employees helped himself to a gum that was on display. It was very ugly and embarrassing for everyone. My company was kicked off the job and banned from ever working for them again. I fired the guy and he filed a discrimination claim with Yok because I did not fire the whole crew. Just him. I got more. I used to work for a company that is now a nightmare. Several events occurred. 1. I was hired as a director of quality regulatory so I come in and start sprucing up documents. Policy and all the essential stuff. A VP of sales doesn't take to kindly to fixing the stuff they were lying, fraud, about and tells me in front of HR. I'm going to make you so miserable that you quit this job still works there. 2. Another sales guy went into a coma, health issue, and the higher ups decided that they could fire him to keep their insurance cheaper and not pay out his life insurance. Luckily HR pointed out the potential lawsuit. After they debated the cost of the lawsuit and whether they could win they kept him on until he passed a week later. 3. When I left. I had my own company they decided they owned any IP I created when I was employed there. I had no contract and non-competes and legal in my state. 4. The C-level employees all were convicted of corruption in multiple countries and are in jail. I had a friend working at GM when HR thought it was a good idea to test everyone on the skill set needed for their department regardless of how long they were in their position. Long careers. 15. 20. 25 years were ruined because even though they worked there for a long time with a long string of great performance reviews. They didn't pass the test that measured what HR thought was required for the department. Say you're a materials expert working in a design department. You may know barely enough of the CAD system to draw a cylinder. On the other hand. Given a cylinder. You can whip out all the properties that cylinder would have if it were made from aluminum. Cold rolled steel. Fiberglass ETC. You'd be out of your job because HR said you had to have a certain level of CAD expertise even if it wasn't relevant to your role in the design process. Knew a weird dude who would sometimes do all nighters in the office. A lady got there early one day. Around 6.30 am. And found the guy masturbating to porn at his cubicle. Crazy thing is. He wasn't fired. I guess he was good enough at working that they just moved him to another department. I used to work in a cubicle farm. I worked an odd shift. Started 4am and left when I was done with my work. I'd be one of the only people there until around 8am. There was usually one other guy there as early as me. I was a software engineer working in an editorial business. We had porn images in our database. It wasn't abnormal to have a porn site up because we would have to index those and have captions and images for various porn films. This wasn't the focus of the business. It was just something that occasionally had to be done. This one guy would start every morning slowly scrolling through porn images in our database on the other side of the cubicle farm. I could see it when I walked by to my desk. My company used to give branded gifts to our clients. One employee volunteered to drive one about an hour away. And he took another employee with him. What he didn't tell anyone is that he didn't have a license. His car was unregistered. And his brakes were bad. So inevitably his brakes failed while trying to stop at an intersection. And he totaled his car. Thankfully no one was seriously hurt. But he got into trouble when the cops came. I work in HR and we recently moved from one HRIS system to another system manages personal information like benefits, contact information, etc. Part of the transitioning is teaching the workforce how to use the app. There are a lot of challenges including the boomers who are technology illiterate, employees who speak very little English, and managers who think learning the system is below their pay grade. I'm normally pretty patient with a language barrier. I mean it's not like I am bilingual either. So if they have the basics of English as a second language they already know more than I do. This one fine day. 
I had a constrained steam of employees trying to figure out how to access the system in their phones despite the step-by-step -step written and pictorial instructions. When I have this one older individual ask me to help him. Nothing but XXX hardcore porn would come up on his smartphone browser. He legit couldn't understand why I couldn't help him. The browser just kept going back to porn no matter what I typed in. I usually feel like I can figure people's phones out but I reached my limit. I couldn't tell if the poor guy had a virus on his phone or if he was ducking with me. Creepy old guy my father's age. Barely speaks English. And not embarrassed by the raunchy porn stuck on his screen. I told him to go get his phone cleaned up and don't come back with it until he fixed it. I haven't seen him since. I was asked to translate for some visitors from the parent company at a celebration held by HR. I stopped translating around the time the director of HR started asking overly personal sexual questions to the two young HR office ladies. A couple days later, during a private bullshit session, I recounted the story to a friend who happened to be a director from the parent company. He put on his professional hat and asked me to write it up and submit a complaint to the parent company's HR. Nightmare ensued. Local head of HR had been in charge of the sexual harassment avoidance training that had narrowly saved them from lawsuit. CEO of local company insisted that I bring the story out in public and talk to the director of HR like an adult. Parent company HR brought in HR from another local subsidiary to perform an investigation. It became painfully obvious who the whistleblower was. Nothing came of the investigation that I heard about. But the next year was made to be a living hell for me by the local company. Even the office lady who had been the subject of the sexy inquisition resented the fact that she was in the center of a controversy. I left that company as soon as I possibly could and was not saddened to hear of their bankruptcy and partition a couple of years later, they had other issues as well. TL. Doctor got harassed out of my job by HR after reporting HR director for sexual harassment. Not crazy per se but dumb and annoying. The HR team here recently rebranded themselves the people team. Presumably to seem more friendly. I just enjoy the implication that they are saying all the other teams in the business aren't people. The nightmare of an hour employee potentially causing the HR nightmare, I took a grad course meant to prep future school principals on HR staff. One of our assignments was to ask our current principal for redacted copies of disciplinary letters they'd written to use as examples to practice writing our own. This assignment seemed sketchy from the get go. But whatever. It's grad school and I want an A. The course was taught by the HR director who'd helped hire me and my building principal in the same school year. The principal didn't have any letters from before I started there so just gave me a couple random ones. Somehow the professor was still surprised when I came to class knowing all the details of each write up despite the absence of detail in the letters. The professor flipped out a little because he was worried the principal had broken some confidentiality rule. It was actually just that I happened to be friends with the two that had been written up. Teacher HR is a nightmare unto itself. Once upon a time I was now a manager. This is my worst story. Once I had a dude who looked great on paper for a mid-level role at the large non-profit I worked for, we were a houselessness and addiction rehab shelter. Easily the type of resume for our operation stepped which made us all think oh this guy looks good, he could be management material someday with these type of credentials. I phone interviewed him and thought oh yeah. The team's gonna love him. We set up an in-person interview. I wasn't able to sit in on the in-person interview. So the director of that depth and his best longest standing employee did it. Apparently when the guy first showed up and was asked if he'd like anything to drink. He asked for a bourbon on the rocks, kidding. And everything went downhill from there. According to the debt director and the other employee. The interview went immediately terrible and the guy kept floating things like, but I bet you're not going to hire me because of. They felt like every answer from the guy and every question was meant to be some sort of verbal trap he was laying. So they cut it pretty short. Later. The guy called me back directly, he had my office because I had used it to phone interview him, and left a VM. He started by saying essentially thank you for the opportunity. 
but I really didn't appreciate how you guys clearly didn't want to hire me because I'm a male I'm too old I'm a father I have a chronic medical issue I was an alcoholic 10 plus years ago I was once homeless etc etc. All of these are verbal traps. And I am 100% sure he was trying to trap us so he could disparage the organization and sue us. I can't say definitively that none of these were true. We weren't thinking of any of these things. And we were damn near ready to hire him before the interview had he done as well as he did on paper and in the phone interview. The only reason we didn't hire him was because he was clearly a malicious psychopath. And it was pretty clear he wanted the organization's money but had no intention of doing any real work, besides an hour of interviewing, to get it. I had to bring the issue up with our CEO and CFO. And we drafted a very clear statement in return. Which are left by voicemail and email. Dear Mr. Thank you for the opportunity to interview you. In response to your prior communication. We feel it very important to clarify that we have not yet decided on a final candidate for this role. And as we discussed in both your phone interview and your in-person interview. The only consideration we will make when deciding on a final candidate is whether one's professional qualifications match the needs of this role. Thank you for your time. We will keep you informed on our final decision. Sincerely. F. That guy.